Hello, I'm Claire and in this recording I'll be showing you how you can quickly and simply use the free program Krita to edit a piece of scanned artwork so that you can turn it into a motif quickly and easily. Specifically, there are three steps we'll be following. First of all, filtering the image so that it turns back into the colour it was when you painted it and before you put it into the scanner. Secondly, selecting areas of background to get rid of them easily. And thirdly, if you've got a trickier background, showing how you can use masks to very quickly and easily and non-destructively take out the pieces you want and just be left with the motif. So let's get straight to it. Because there are so many different sorts of scanner, I'm not going to go into how to scan things in here. I'm going to assume that you've scanned in your artwork into the computer somewhere. I have here, this is what this loose gladioli file is. This is the starting screen of Krita, and I'll put a link in the, the description to uh, let you know where that is if you've never used it before. But I've opened up the file I've scanned in, and trust me, compared to the file that I scanned in, this does look washed out because our scanner's favourite trick is making things look washed out. But no matter, let's go straight on to stage one, which is changing the colour values here, the, specifically the hue and saturation. And to do that, you go up to filter and then you go to adjust and then you go to HSV adjustment. It took me a while to work this out. And I'm sure everybody else in the world would be very simple. But HSV adjustment, of course, stands for hue, value, saturation. And there we go. It couldn't be simpler. In fact, it's even simpler because we're only going to be looking at these two sliders here for this particular task, hue and saturation. And my original is quite a bit pinker than this. Uh, th this is looking a little bit purple. So in order to change that, I'm just going to slide this hue scanner very gently, very gently over to the right. And in fact, that's too far because it's now a bit red. It's still somewhere around the eight, eight mark, a little bit higher. Ten. Ten looks good. I've got a little bit of red down there, but most of this is a nice pinkish colour, which it much more which represents much more accurately the original. And the saturation, the whole thing can do with a bit of a boost to get back to how it looked originally as well. And I'm going to turn that up just by move. I've put my mouse, then put my pointer onto there, and I'm just using the mouse to scroll along here. 26. For some reason, 26 is a magic number for saturation for me in all sorts of programs. But here we are again. 26 makes it look much more like the watercolour that I started with. So I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going to call this stage of boosting the colours done. I'm going to click OK to fix those choices in. And that's stage one of the process done. Now, if you were, as you probably are, much more sensible than me, you may very well have just drawn your artwork or painted your artwork with a plain white background. And if you have, then it's going to be a piece of cake to remove that background. And you can simply use what I'm going to demonstrate here in stage two. And the tool we need here is this sort of, this thing that looks like a pom-pom on a stick, but which the screen is reassuring me is a contiguous selection tool. I'm going to click on that. And what that actually does is to, is to select colours of the hue or colour of the pixel that you click on, but also those that are similar around it. Let me show you um, with the green here. And it thinks about it, and it thinks about it. Oh, it, I managed to choose an area where there's just one pixel there. That's, it, that's the colour. Let's select some white, because after all, if you're sensible and you have a white background, that's what you'll be selecting. So here we go. I'm clicking on the white. Oh, and it's thinking about it. There we go. That's what it does. It's noticed every portion of white it can possibly take out in the in the image. And that's a fabulous thing because that means that all you have to do is press delete. 
and every piece of white that was in the background is now gone. Ah, you may say, it looks like it's gone, but why have I still got what looks like flashing black soot there? Not a problem. All you do here is deselect. And like magic, all the white is gone. So as you can imagine, if you had a purely white background, you'd be done now because you'd just be left with your motif in the center. However, if like me, you have more colors uh, to move in this image, fear not because stage three is still available to us. And in order to get to stage three, which is applying a mask to take off this extra color, here's what we do. You go to layer one over here. Now your layers palette, depending on how you've laid out Krita, may be a little bit different, but on your layers palette, put your mouse over the layer, right click on the layer, go down to add, and you want very simply this top option. This window comes out automatically when you mouse over add, and you want to click on transparency mask. And what that does is to give you a transparency mask underneath here. So clicking on the mask, in fact, it, it, that whole line will be highlighted. You'll see here that the colors have changed. And that is because you're now operating basically in a land of black or white with this mask. You do want to select a, a painting tool of some sort up here. Uh, this is defaulting to a watercolour tool, which I'll leave because this is a watercolour item that I'm scanning and therefore taking out colours in a watercolour way works and makes it look that little bit softer. Um, but you've got, but you may you may be thinking, as I did when I first encountered masks, why do they always go to black and white? Don't understand. If that's you, um, you may have heard the phrase, I didn't invent it, but it's absolutely everywhere that black conceals and white reveals. What that means is if you're painting with black in your image up there, your basic choices are between black and white and various shades in between. But keeping it simple, if you're painting with black, that means that everything you paint on the layer will be in fact concealed. And I'm just doing this with, let's do it with an even bigger brush just to show you. See all this area down here? as I paint over it, it gets concealed. Now, if you were to choose a more, a, a less fluffy brush, a less soft brush, in fact, let's choose it just, just so you can see. You know, I'm going to go through all, go to the all um, brushes here. Oh gosh, I've got a lot of brushes and probably ones I don't need in Krita. Just looking for a different sort of brush to see what it does. Um, take a more bristly brush you see everything comes out really quickly I just press Control Z there just to get some stuff back but changing the size of the brush head if you change to a different brush it will rub out much more quickly everything that's there and that's because you're effectively applying black over this and so you're simply concealing the stuff that you no longer want to be there ah you may say but if the effect of that is to rub it out, then why don't I simply use the eraser? Good question. And let's just flick and put this to white and show you why. If you go back to white, and if you apologies if you're really familiar with masks and you already know this, but if you flick back to white and you paint like that, you can paint back in anything which you might accidentally have taken out that you really wanted to keep. So this is why people use masks. I finally got it, it took me ages, but I finally got it. It's because you never have to lose anything and you've always got options. But just for now, let's flick back to black because black conceals. Gonna, this brush is gonna be much quicker for the task just to take out the things we don't need. And now what I'm gonna be doing in the next few minutes is really quite repetitive. So I'm gonna show you the first few steps of it, and then the whole thing of the rest of it is gonna be a repeat performance. I'm using this nice big brush to take out these all these big bits around the motif that I definitely don't want, and because they're so far from the image that I do want, I, in fact, I can use a nice big brush, but you see, 
see we're now getting to the point where I might accidentally take out some of the flower sure I could reverse it by going to white but also this is literally a very broad brush approach now and look down here this shows the percentage to which you're zoomed in we're actually zoomed out quite a long way this was a big image to begin with so if we go to 100 percent which is after all how things will actually print yeah I know it looks really weird but you get to see much more precisely the stuff that's already there you also get to see that the brush looks massive at this, this zoomed in distance all I'm going to be doing for the next few minutes is going around the image and taking out in much more detail all the paint which is there we go we had the sorry there was just a time lag on the computer there I was thinking what's happening all I'm going to be doing is taking out all the areas of paint which are not wanted by this masking process and see I'm just listen there's the, there's the green here I'm taking out and then I'll be zooming back out to see how much I've taken out and I'll be zooming in and out with different brush sizes until everything else is gone now I'm guessing that that is not necessarily what you wanted to see now you've got the idea of what we're doing and so I'm just going to pause this recording and come back to you when all of these side pieces have been taken out through this process of with the masked area kept black simply brushing over it with black zooming in I'll do it one more time brushing some more seeing what that looks like when you zoom back out again and so on so I'll see you on the other side of that process okay I'm back now and as you can see let's zoom out just a little bit more the majority of the background has now gone we're still on the mask with this um, and quite honestly I changed brushes just to speed things up a little bit but as you can see the majority of the background has gone the more time you have obviously the more time you can spend zooming in and out and getting rid of every little piece that you don't want on your motif as this is a fairly loose motif anyway I'm going to stop that there there is one little check that you might like to do at this point and it's very simple and again it uses our old friend the contiguous selection tool here so I'm going to click on that and if you click on this transparent background that's the checkered piece it shows effectively that there's nothing there in Krita just just check on it there and you will see that even though it looks like there's nothing there Krita has still managed to select something what that means is obviously that there were bits of the background that were not removed and so easy as pie now the selection tool has nicely pointed it out just to press delete to get rid of that which it's selecting that you don't need and then in order to see that it's done that go to deselect and in fact you can carry on doing this I, I thought I saw a little yellow bit up there and indeed we've got one so I selected it with the contiguous selection tool pressing delete and then deselect you can carry on doing that just to make absolutely sure there's nothing in your background that's lurking there that you don't want to have so there you have it in three steps uh, a motif has been extracted from its background as well as having had its color boosted and all in a free program called Krita as with any file in Krita you now may wish to export it so you can actually use it as a motif and to do that that's very simple as well go to file down to export sorry my computer is moving slowly because it's also um, filming to demonstrate this and going to JPEG, uh, go, I beg your pardon, going to PNG so that you can keep this background and loose gladioli is being saved 
as a motif there. And there you have it. It can now be used as a motif in a pattern or any other design or other task that your heart desires. I hope this has been useful. Thanks ever so much for watching and have a great day. Many thanks.